Hi, I'm Stephen Brown and welcome to Bits of Code. Today we're going to build a StarCraft 2 bot that uses reinforcement learning to defeat the opponent. It's going to be a simplified Terran bot. Uh, it will be able to build a single supply depot, a single barracks, and it will train a few marines before it attacks the opponent. So it's not a full version of the game, it's a simplified version uh, to, de to demonstrate reinforcement learning and how that works and what's possible. Uh, we'll actually have the, the bot play against itself, so uh, instead of having an opponent with all the abilities in the game, the opponent will have the same abilities that we have, the same restrictions that we have, and we'll disable Fog of War so that you can see uh, all of the pieces on, on the board, it's kind of like a chess game. It makes it a lot simpler for reinforcement learning uh, and just sort of allows us to, to get something together fairly quickly. It will run for about a thousand games. I found that the bot will learn within about 500 games or so, but giving it a thousand games allows it some time just in case there is some variance. Uh, reinforcement learning isn't predictable. It isn't, it isn't always the same every time you run it. So sometimes it will take a bit longer to learn. Sometimes it may not even learn at all. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is add our imports. So we'll add those in there nothing too much uh, different from the, the last few code samples that we've done. And then we want to add the algorithm. So we're using what's called a Q-learning table. Uh, this is a, a simplified version of, of reinforcement learning. It's not really used at the, at the top level, uh, you know, for example, in AlphaStar or things like that, but it's a really good way to get started with reinforcement learning. And we covered a little bit of how that worked in the last video. So the main component of the Q-learning table, the, the main method is uh, choosing the action. Uh, and in here it chooses 90% of the time it will choose the preferred action and then 10% of the time it'll choose an action at random. So it's kind of exploring what the possibilities are by having a random choice every now and then. Uh, the next most important uh, method here is learn. So it takes the, the state, the action reward and the next state that it lands in and then uh, sort of does a few mathematical uh, calculations and, and updates the, the table accordingly and, and that's how it learns over time. The next thing we're going to do is create a base agent. This is an agent that both our random agent and our learning agent will use. It has uh, all of the actions that the agent can do and a few other bits and pieces that, that both agents can share which makes our other agents a lot simpler. So we'll put that in now. So at the top here you can see we've got a definition of the actions that can be performed. Do nothing, harvest minerals, build supply depot, build barracks, train marine and attack. And then there's a few utility methods uh, that we use. We've covered some of these in our last videos. Next we'll add each of the actions. So we'll drop these in the bottom here. So you can see do nothing is fairly simple. Harvest minerals uh, essentially looks for any of the possible mineral patches of which there's quite a few build supply depot builds it at a fixed location build barracks builds it at a, at a fixed location uh, train marine uh, it's fairly obvious and then attack will attack the enemy base at a fixed location within a random radius of about um, four points for world units so the next thing we're going to do is is create the random agent so the random agent literally takes the list of actions from the from the base agent, chooses one at random, and then using this little get at d e t a t t r, uh, it essentially can execute that function. So we we look up the top here. We've got this list of actions on line forty four. It picks one of those lines, takes that value, and then is able to use that value as a method call. So build supply depot it will then call build supply depot and it will pass the observation that it receives into that. Then we create our smart agent. So this smart agent is very similar to the random agent, uh, it just has a little bit more uh, machine learning stuff involved there. So first of all, uh, initializing the agent, it creates a Q table using our Q learning table class uh, as we used previously and it takes the actions of the base agent and passes those in. So now the Q-learning table knows these are the actions that it can perform, these are the actions that it can choose from. 
And then it calls a new game method, which is also what we call every time the game is reset or a new game is started. And that simply initializes a few values uh, where the base is and, and previous state and previous action. Now, previous state and previous action are important for the reinfor reinforcement learning part. So we use those values. Each time it performs an action, it stores that action in the previous action. So in the next step, it knows what it performed previously and the same with the state. Now the next method we add to our random agent is get state and, and this is essentially takes all the values of the game that we find important and distills them into a, a simple list. So the values we have here, we, we count the number of uh, our command sensors, our SCVs, how many idle SCVs and then we track all of the enemy's units, so their command centers, SCVs and uh, supply depots and so on. So if we take all these values and we create a simple list or array of these values that we can feed into our machine learning algorithm and it can know this is the state of the game at this point in time. It's, it's highly simplified but it's actually fairly effective. Now one of the reasons that we track whether or not we can afford something rather than the number of minerals that we have is the number of minerals can, can get quite high and it can be very granular. Uh, but actually all we care about is whether or not we can afford those things. So by simplifying it to a yes or no, a true or false, the machine learning algorithm has less possible variations and, and can learn far more quickly without having to have you know, a five mineral difference or a three mineral difference or whatever it happens to be and having each step of those. It would take thousands and thousands and thousands more games to learn the same result without any real difference in, in value. And next we create the step method for our machine learning agent. What it does here is it gets the state, so the current state of the game. It chooses an action, so it feeds the state into our Q-learning table, and the Q-learning table either chooses the best action or an action at random, and then returns that. Uh, and then what we do is we determine, what well, look, if we've performed an action previously, what we want to do is we want to learn uh, from that action and that state and now where we are now. So we call the, the learn method on our queue table. We pass it in the state that we were in last time and the action it performed last time. We also pass in the reward that we received from the game. Now this will be a zero for most steps of the game, uh, a one if we win, a minus one if we lose. And then we pass in whether it's terminal or not. And this is kind of important so that the reward that we receive at the end of the game has a lot more value than the rewards that we receive on the way to the end of the game. Then we store the previous state and the previous action so we can use them in the next step. And then we execute the, the action that we've chosen the same as we did with the random agent. And the last piece for this bot, we add the code that actually runs this. So we've used this before, uh, but let's look at it again just in a little bit more detail, but since we're using two agents this time. So on line 257, we create an instance of the smart agent, our, our machine learning agent. Line 258, we create an instance of the random agent. Then we pass these agents in. So on line 272, we actually pass in both of our agents into the run loop and now we're controlling both of the agents that play the game rather than just controlling one of the agents and having the other agent be a bot. You can see on line 262 and 263, we define both of the players as being agents uh, with a race of Terran. Previously, we defined one of the players as being an agent, which is our, our bot, and one of the players as being the in-game bot, which is the artificial AI that comes with the game. So now if we run this, you'll see two game windows open, uh, one with your bot, uh, your machine learning bot, and one with the, the random agent. What you'll find over the course of the thousand games or so, when it first starts out, both of the, the bots are choosing actions at random. They tend to build one marine and they send it out across the map, or maybe they'll get two or three marines. Uh, and eventually they send them out. And sometimes the random agent will win, sometimes your agent will win. Um, and, and over time, what you'll see is that the machine learning agent will discover that it can actually, it's better to mass up units. It'll, it'll build more like three, four or five Marines before it attacks. 
And if you look closely, you can see that it potentially learns that the best time to attack is when the enemy has no or one or only two marines. So we'll actually wait for the enemy to send out marines uh, into your base and it will wait until those marines get killed because maybe you have four or five marines messed up and then it will attack. And so by the time you get to about 500 games or so, you'll find that this strategy has kind of evolved and it can win fairly consistently from there. Now it won't always win because it's still choosing a random action 10% of the time and it's also possible that the random agent stumbles across a better strategy just by the fact that it's operating randomly and it's, it's not always choosing what it thinks is the best. So it's 95% win rate is, is about where you can get to and that other 5% is, is you know, the randomness or potentially just luck that it, it, uh, you know, it loses out for some reason. There are some other things that may contribute to why it might lose or why it might not necessarily get a perfect win rate. It, it doesn't know the health of units. It doesn't know the health of buildings. It doesn't know where the Marines are on the map. So it might be uh, better informed by knowing, okay, these Marines are in my base. These Marines are in the enemy base. Maybe these Marines are running across the map if it had that information maybe it would make even better decisions and and win a, a higher percentage win rate that's something you can probably play around with yourself and, and see what information you want to give to this agent and and teach it how to play better just be aware that as you add more information it has to learn has to, has to run more games so that it can learn all the different variations of what can kind of be performed and then learn from that. Thanks for watching. This is the last video in the series. Uh, over the last six videos, we learned how to make a simple Zerg bot. Uh, we covered what your bot can see and do. We created a Protoss bot using raw actions like Alpha Star. We learned what reinforcement learning is, and we've just created a Terran bot using reinforcement learning. Now, we'd love to hear your bits of feedback on what you like or don't like about the video and a link to the code is available in the description down below.